Shout out Sean. Changing the game through real estate. Yeah. Changing the game through real estate. I can never wait. Got what it takes. It's got this on my plate. And I got a budget. Teach you how to save. Listen to this podcast. You will be amazed. Play this any morning, any night, any day. We're the winning team. We were born to be brave. Yeah. Changing the game through real estate. Yeah. What really impressed me about you is like you're talking about everything that no one really wants to talk about. And I know for me personally, like I started uh, looking more into like the agricultural farming. And one thing that really like was very interesting to me, I didn't know like Bill Gates was like had 270,000 acres of farmland. And what I thought was really strange is China actually owns 190,000 acres of farmland. So I feel like, and I don't know if like, if I'm the only one, but I see on social media, like you see like food process plants, like on fire and I really wanted to bring you on the show to really talk about that. But before we really get talk about that, this is uh, Stephanie Nash. Welcome to the show. And can you kind of tell everyone who don't, doesn't know who you are? I know you're into country music. You have uh, agriculture, you have a family farm. Can you just kind of, I know I was like a little all over the place, but can you kind of tell us like your, your backstory and everything? Yeah. So again, my name's Stephanie Nash. I'm a fourth generation dairy farmer, originally from Fresno, California. We moved our dairy farm in 2013 when water was getting very um, hard to get in California and also regulations. Um, A lot of people, when they think about California, they think about beaches and, you know, the city Mm -hmm. life. And it's not just that. Um, It's the largest agriculture county in the United States, the San Joaquin Valley. So California is known for a lot of things, but agriculture doesn't get enough recognition. Um, Unfortunately, you know, we left that richness of California to come to Tennessee just because dairy farms were going out of business so drastically, um, especially in 2008, 2009. Um, So we've been sitting here in Nashville, Tennessee, south of Nashville, uh, for about nine years now. Um, the last two years, we've really been pushing our own products. Uh, we're known for our ice cream and our little creamery in Chapel Hill, Tennessee. And then we also just released our own cheeses and cheese curds. So really been just trying to brand buying local and being able to have that support from our community. Um, you know, <laughs> when COVID hit, I really just saw the urgency of people going to the grocery store and starting to get scared because they couldn't get products that they needed. I mean, we still see it nowadays. I feel like, you know, I have people messaging me all the time. Hey, there's no eggs. Hey, there's no baby formula. Hey, there's no milk at my grocery store. And it's something very concerning for us as family farmers or ranchers, especially during COVID. You saw Michigan farmers dumping milk because the plants were too full. But on the other hand, grocery stores were empty. So I started advocating for the truth coming out of the USDA, the truth coming out of the government, um, of what is actually happening in the agriculture industries. Um, I don't think Americans really educate themselves enough about where their food comes from. Unfortunately, in the last 10 years, we've seen um, almond milk and oat milk and beyond meat really take over our market. And no matter what you're putting into your bodies, um, if it's a health choice or a lifestyle choice, I think Americans should know what the actual, uh, you know, content of the, of the food is, you know, when you look at beyond meat, um, there's things in, in that ingredients that are illegal in other countries. And, um, if you look at other countries like Europe and France, they banned, um, you know, anything that is not livestock on labels. And I think that's something the USA should do, um, for livestock because it protects agriculture, it protects your family, farmers and ranchers and what your food should actually be called. So, And all of that, you know, I created this platform that has been growing not only on LinkedIn, but, you know, now I I am a spokesperson for national news for family farmers and ranchers. Um, The beginning this year, there was also an opportunity for me to come on to TPUSA. They partner with Fox Nation, um, a lot of great ambassadors for different topics of our economy. And so I was the first ambassador to represent the agriculture industry. So really excited to be on that. That has been 
life changing, honestly, life changing to be a part of that. Um, And then, you know, just traveling, speaking at different conferences, uh, being an influence for, you know, our next generation, growing up, knowing what agriculture is. And so that's what I've been busy with. And, you know, just trying to be a big voice for agriculture. Yeah, I've been seeing you definitely everywhere. I guess well, uh, one thing you said, you said mentioned back in 08 and 09, a lot of people uh, like lost their farms. Was it because of like the, the housing crash and the, um, not not having money to afford the farms or what kind of like affected them back then? Yeah, I think everything from our economy to just the change. I think 2009 and 2000 you know, eight, you see like the social media change too, right? We weren't really like Snapchat had, you know, just gotten started and Facebook was getting big and new apps were coming in for people to be online more. So I feel like education changed, the economy changed. And, uh, you know, for for California, they were going through a lot of um, government over overtake. So I think, um, in general, 2008, 2009 was hard on agriculture because they weren't getting paid enough for their products, but they were paying in other, um, you know, other farm inpor- inputs more than they were um, of what they could afford to keep their farm alive. So it was just a really hard time for agriculture. Um, it, has, it hasn't really gotten any better, honestly. Yeah. If anything, it's gotten worse. Um, you know, you see for sale signs out in the country. Um, all the time. And I, I, this is the biggest thing that I'm really passionate about too, is like people want to move out of the state because they don't like the government or what is going on in their state, but they don't realize how it's going to affect rural communities and other places like California, you know, California is California. It's what it is. It's never going to change. It's always going to be government ran, but then you come to states like Tennessee or Texas and Montana And you see farmers struggling just to get more land because they can't afford it. I mean, we live an hour outside of Nashville and we moved here in 2013. Land has gone up like 50% since we moved here. And um, it's just devastating, you know, to agriculture communities because we're not thinking about the land that we're taking up. Um, You know, I was watching something today that I'll probably post on tomorrow. There was a guy saying that, you know, livestock needs to die, that agriculture is the number one you know, reason why we're, we are losing wildlife and climate change and all of this stuff. And I'm like, you guys aren't even looking at the facts that transportation and electricity are at the top of emissions. And you're not even looking at how many housing developments are, you know, building throughout our cities. Look at Colorado Springs. They just built a huge Amazon plant and then they're building houses on houses on houses. Um, and so I, I posted today, you know, you, we care more about that luxury living than we do agriculture right now. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it hasn't slowed down for uh, farmers and ranchers in, in the fight to keep their land. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think it was my family tree gets so mixed up. But my granddad's cousin, he had a farm up in uh, um, kind of western Virginia. And uh, he got he ended up having to sell his farm because of um was property taxes what really got him because all the residential started pushing uh pushing back to the edge of his farm and his taxes got too much to afford to i guess to keep everything up and running and he ended up having to sell and um one of the statistics i'm not sure how accurate it is they said the average uh u.s farmer makes only like forty nine thousand dollars a year is that kind of like roughly accurate with most uh small farmers that you know or I don't know that number. Um, It's very different across the board. So honestly, lately I've been seeing an imbalance in agriculture because you have to think about it. Livestock is always tackled for the climate change issue. Livestock is always a problem with neighbors. If they smell something and they don't like it, livestock is always the problem with marketing with these fake products coming in. And so I think there's a total um you know miscommunication with the people in our community because they see big tractors and fancy equipment on a grain farm um and that could mean nothing the farmer could be you know 500 one two million dollars in debt and they wouldn't even realize that they just see big equipment on the farm um and then they just assume that you know farmers and ranchers are getting all this money when in reality you know we're just a dying breed and so Um, When it comes to statistics, I don't really know the average, but 
I do know that agriculture is less than 10% of the climate change issue. Um, and I, I know that, you know, 45,000 dairy farms have gone out since 2003 and 60% of family farmers in the pork industry have gone out and China's come in and, and bought some processing plants. Um, so I know there's a big attack on livestock industry right now and, um, you know, just a lot going on. Yeah. I just feel like there's like, like this massive, like chess move that's going on that no one really knows what's going on because like you say like bill gates is buying two hundred seventy thousand dollars, two hundred seventy thousand acres of farmland and then china's buying all this farmland i feel like they had they, they know something that we don't like they're trying to yeah i guess they're uh, pushing uh fake meat and then they're buying all the farmland but like why like it doesn't like it doesn't make any much sense so i'm curious of like what's your theories on why they're buying farmland yeah, so I think the biggest thing too is like people are like, oh, well, she, <laughs> I get this all the time on platforms. Oh, she's a Trump supporter or she doesn't like this administration because of what they stand for. No, I don't like this administration because of what they stand mm -hmm. for. And I'll tell you right now, no president has been perfect. No president has made every decision thinking about how it will affect agriculture here in the United States. And there's been a lot of mistakes with many presidents. But the problem that I have with this administration is because as soon as they came into office and I called it two years ago, I said, you know, if Trump loses, get ready for Pelosi to tackle this climate change problem with her billion dollar budget. And here we are two days later after they passed a $430 billion budget. Um, you know, I think the problem with this administration and their followers is they want to save the planet and they want to do that in any way. They don't care what it destroys. Um, they just want to be better people. But the problem with that is the people that follow this activism kind of lifestyle against agriculture, they are living in New York City. They are living in Denver, Colorado. They are living in uh, San Francisco, California, and they're living in an apartment that is giving back to this 27% electricity emission problem. And they continue to attack agriculture. And it doesn't matter if they le le eat lettuce or they eat tofu, it still comes from a family farmer and rancher. Um, I think it's so funny because, you know, Yellowstone, there's a little bit of a different, um, you know, I, I guess feedback on it. But I love the line when he says, you know, you only care how cute the animal is. <laughs> and I think that is so true to these activists that continue to attack agriculture because we don't have the cutest animals. But, you know, you go back to California, the Delta smelt, and they're trying to save one fish and they want to kill off the richest land in California, the richest land in the United States that grows everything. You know, I mean, it's, it's crazy to me that... Um, there's still people that are educating our next generation on where our food is coming from, but they live a lifestyle um, that is actually hurting our planet more. So, you know, it, it's just crazy to me. I fight, I fight against people, you know, right now in this administration because they really are spending our tax dollars on something that is not fixable um, just because you're going to attack agriculture. If we're going to fix it, if they really do believe that our planet is dying and, and changing, then they would be trying to regulate every industry and not just the agriculture industry. Yeah, I, uh, I looked a little bit into uh, the new plan that he proposed. Isn't it something like where he's uh, restricting like farmers when it comes to like their, uh, what was it? The, um, the Something about the livestock farming. I can't remember exactly what it was. Can you, uh, do you know uh, what I'm talking about? With that, with that aspect? Yeah, so I guess this is where I'm a fighter for livestock industry. Like, I love agriculture and I want to fight for everybody, but I'm a dairy farmer. So livestock is in, in, in my blood and it, it just, you know, starts to boil when people lie about what I do. Um, so, yeah, the bill proposes that they want to cut emissions by 40 percent by 2030. Um, you know, I haven't looked at the entire breakdown because it just passed a couple days ago. Um, but I do know that in all the articles that I've read and all of the um, education that I've gotten from other farmers and ranchers, I do know that is a huge attack on livestock industry. And most of the comments coming from the people that have passed it um, continue to say that we're going to work with family farmers and ranchers because they're the, you know, the biggest problem with this emissions, um, you know, planet, agriculture, not being safe, um, whatever they want to call it. Uh, but, 
it's, I don't know how to even say it. Cause I just think it's not even correct. It's, it's, it's so far off from what is actually going on. I feel like they're trying to deflect. Like if agriculture can be at the center of the problem and we can make Americans believe that they are the problem, then we can fund our plant-based projects and we can let China buy more land and we can let Bill Gates buy more land and, and, and make all of their developments that they want to make. Um, so I just think there's a lot going on in the White House right now. We'll see where, where it goes. I think, you know, people don't know about the farm bill. I don't believe every five years, the farm bill is put into, um, effect to protect family farmers and ranchers. That's really the only bill we have, um, that protects us. So I think with this coming into 2023, the new proposal for the farm bill, and now passing this billion dollar budget, it's really gonna hurt us um, trying to get a fair shot for our farm bill. Um, so we'll just have to see. I, I believe that you know, in 2023, this Biden administration is gonna try to put um, climate change funding and if you don't follow those rules, you're gonna go out of business into the farm bill, but we'll just have to see in the future. So why do you think, uh, like just in your opinion, why do you think they're pushing toward more like away from farmers, more away from naturally grown into more processing plants, like, like, like more or less fake food? Like because they're inve- because they're invested into it. That's why. I mean, if you look at the senators and everybody that's in the White House right now, they've always been pushing this plant based stuff for the last like five six years. And if they're going to invest, especially, I mean, Tesla, look at Tesla. They're going to push electric cars on people because they're invested into it. They want energy infrastructure because they're invested into it. They want new fancy neighborhoods because they're invested into it. Um, They're not invested into agriculture because it's 97% family farmer owned. Um, So that's something that I say all the time. That's why they attack us is because they don't control us. Um, So they're trying to control the food supply. They're trying to run us out of business. And I'll tell you right now, family farmers and ranchers in the middle class economy, they're going to fight harder than most of these people that support this administration. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a big investment for them. They could care less about the planet. So uh, with down to like the family uh, farm aspect, are they able to like the pivot at all kind of really help them uh, stay like almost not necessarily ahead of the curve, but stay ahead of like property tax? Is there a way to like help? maximize their revenues so they can help like sustain their farm is there ways to to really do that or i mean the biggest thing is producing your own product so you get to you know make your price because the problem with agriculture is we have a whole bunch of people telling us what we're going to make we don't actually get to set our price um for the american people that's why i say when you go to the grocery store and things are more expensive don't think that family farmers and ranchers are making more money because we're not. We're getting paid the same, even though you're paying more. Um, so I think people and family farmers and ranchers across our country are kind of trying to make their own products and trying to um, get into other businesses to support their farm. Like I know a lot of people, especially in Tennessee, tons of beef farmers across our state, but they all have second jobs. Because right now they're not making any money. I mean, you look at Texas, I talked about it the other day, fires, droughts, um, a governor that could care less about agriculture in his state, and they're selling off beef cattle by the thousands. And that's the largest beef producer in the United States is Texas. Um, So if people were to pay attention to their own states and see what's going on, maybe they would start to listen to, you know, their local rural communities because those are the people feeding them right now. It's not China. It's not the government. It's not Bill Gates. Um, it's their local community. So, I mean, the best thing that family farmers and ranchers right now can do is just hold on tight, fight for themselves and get their community behind them. So the way the process works for uh, a farm, let's say like, let's say you're, you're in the, uh, the dairy business. So you may, uh, make your product and you're selling your, are you selling it to like a distribution center? And they they set that price and you more or less got either got to sell at that price and you don't really have any other option. Yeah. So when we have our own products, we we get to make the price. But when it comes to like shipping our milk, the the buyer tells us what we're going to get for our milk. So when it comes to our ice cream, ice cream products or our cheese products, we set the price. 
um, and we sell it to local stores or distribution centers. Um, but when it comes to like, I mean, the biggest thing is the beef guys around here. You know, there's four main packers across the United States. So what they say goes and they don't get a penny more. Um, so that's sad because, you know, we should be able to say, hey, this is what we think our animals are worth or our products are worth. And we just don't get to do that right now. Okay, so the mainly the pa- the big the four big packers are the ones that are really setting the price and really, I guess, making making all the money on the spread. Yeah, for the beef farmers. So have uh, farmers ever like decided to like, hey, rather than pay all these four big plants, like let's all get together and make our own uh, food processing plant? Or I guess is that I guess that requires a lot of the capital, but. I mean, yeah, it, it it requires investment, and not only that, the USDA is broken. I mean, I'm not trying to be hateful because they're the people that represent us, but it has been overrun by politicians that have no idea what farming and ranching is. I mean, honestly, I mean, there's organizations like NCBA and the Dairy Alliance and other big organizations like Farm Bureau that fight for us, but they can only fight so much before the USDA is like, no, we don't want to do that. I mean, if the USDA was so worried about the farmers and ranchers in this country, they would have been in that meeting fighting for us against this climate change bill. I mean, I just, I posted about it this morning on LinkedIn. Like we have nobody in office with a backbone that cares about agriculture right now. I mean, it's just, it's just awful. It's disgusting to see them passing these kinds of bills and, I mean, we need people in office that are farmers and ranchers, hands down, like, because nobody else knows what we're going through. Nobody knows what kind of bills we pay or what kind of debt we're in or what kind of weather changes that we're facing that, you know, the USDA is supposed to be helping with all these farmers and ranchers that go through devastation. And we never see it. We never see any any help from USDA. Um, You know, the best thing we can we can offer is these organizations that are fighting for us for fair prices and competitive markets and hopefully you know people like farm rescue that raise money to go to these areas that have been hit with weather conditions or just financial you know um destruction so yeah i mean there's not a good answer except for getting somebody in office that's going to fight for family farmers and ranchers yeah so uh what can like the consumer like do if they want to buy from local farmers is it just like I guess reach out to, but like let's say for NC Jeller in uh in Tennessee, I mean people over here on the East Coast, like it'd be hard for them to kind of other than go into your social media and reach out. But how does yeah. people like I guess buy uh buy from I guess the 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 farmers? She was sleeping, so I thought she was gonna stay sleeping. I mean the best way for people to support family farmers and ranchers, I mean some people ship I mean, or the best way I always tell people is farmer's markets. Farmer's yeah. markets is the best way to learn about your family, farmer, and rancher. Nashville has an amazing farmer's market. Um, I have people from out of state that come all the time that walk around the farmer's market. And they always say, I wish my city had a big farmer's market. So if there's any farmers or ranchers out there listening um, or people that love to buy local, the best thing you can do is support the people that go to the farmer's markets. or Get with farmers and ranchers around your community and start your own farmer's market. You only need, you know, a little storefront or a a little community to set them up. And, you know, they can do tastings. We do tastings with our cheese so people can see if they like our product. And we tell our story about our family farm and we do tours. Um, So really just, you know, getting to know your family farm and rancher is a big one and just buying local. So what do you see, like, the, uh, I guess, the long-term goal for with the uh even i guess the politicians and i'm not i don't understand why they're pushing like saying agriculture is like an issue with climate change i would think that would be the opposite but um so where do you see like the agenda is like would be the future the end of all u.s farming is that what you see like they're what they're trying to do or i don't know the end of u.s farming but definitely controlling of usa farming you know i mean you see it now the netherlands are fighting back italy's fighting back india was the first people it just came on the news for the netherlands but people don't realize india fought back first to the government they had people dying the government was 
um, you know, really taking over land and water availability and India people, the Indian people really, you know, they were, or they were actually 80% of their people are family farmers and ranchers in their country that feed their own families. So it was really disgusting for the government to come in and say, Hey, we need you to stop farming. Um, and so I think there's a big, I guess my, uh, one of my main, uh, questions I've been thinking about, like, so if, if there's not really that much, uh, if they're pushing like fake foods, why is like Bill Gates, like buying all the lands and all that, uh, all that stuff. I feel like, like years and years down the road, maybe I feel like there's going to, we're going to have like an issue with like food in general. And I feel like that's going to be their way. It's going to be like the hierarchy. They're going to be able to control the entire food supply. So that's where I think my just personal opinion. I feel like if I'm playing chess, I feel like that's what their moves might be. I don't know. What do you, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, when it comes to Bill Gates, I think everybody knows that, you know, he is not afraid to say he wants plant based and he wants lab grown food and he thinks livestock and agriculture are the worst things for our planet. Um, but again, that kind of goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. All these activists, all of these politicians only care about one thing, and that's filling their pockets. So if they can come up with bills that regulate the rest of the economy, um, then that's what they're going to do. I mean, some of these regulations, if you really look into them, they don't even make sense. I mean, back uh, in the beginning of the year, they wanted to do a climate change bill, and it got shot down by the Supreme Court. And that was like 25 million for butterflies and, you know, 120 million for activists um, just to give them money to fight against something. I mean, yeah. for them to just go into, I mean, the biggest thing that I've seen lately, they go into Chick-fil-A, they pour fl fake blood on them. They say they're killing animals. I mean, that's what we're paying for with our tax money. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. If you want activism, if you want to make the planet a better place, you work with people that have been in industries for years that actually know what's going on, not just people that read on the internet. Yeah. So, so uh, is there a way for uh, farmers to like, almost like have like almost multiple sources of income or anything? I know they have like the, um, their food process processing, they give it to uh, the food distribution centers to do that way. Is there any way to like make extra income with farming, like outside of like, I know like some people over, uh, I guess it's kind of Western Virginia over here. They do like uh, like lamping campground sites on their uh, on their farm. Is there like other ways to to really make income through through that? To, yeah, like, I mean nowadays. Yeah, nowadays, like especially where we are, like Franklin and Nolansville, they've been very open to farm tours and camps and actually coming to visit us and educating themselves about what we do. And that's a way for us to be able to give back financially to the farm. We're educating our community and also they're helping us with bills that we need to pay to keep our operation and family business running. So there's a lot of opportunities, but again, it takes some you know, income to get it started. And um, I wish the USDA would provide more grants for farmers for education. I think that's something that we miss in the USDA. You know, during COVID, I talked about it a little bit that, you know, family farmers and ranchers were dumping milk and they weren't being able to get into processing plants. And for me, that's a problem. When families at home weren't able to feed their kids because they didn't have a job, that's a program the USDA should have implemented. And I've had a lot of people say it's, it's, it's deeper than that, Stephanie. I really don't think it is. I think there's a lot of family farmers and ranchers that would rather give back to programs that like that than have to wait on the government to say if they can sell their food or not. So yeah. um, I just think there's a lot of programs that we could be implementing across the United States and across the world. I mean, there's so many missionaries that travel across and help communities that need it. And the U.S. could be providing that. So do y'all have a lot of like hedge funds calling y'all to buy a, buy y'all's property at all? Or no, like not, we haven't. Not for you personally, but like farmers in the area or anything like that? No. I mean, we, people know that we're pretty settled here. Yeah. I mean, if anything, people are just like, how many acres do you have? And it, I mean, it's not a ton. We have a little bit over 600 and we're happy with that. We wish we could rent and buy more, which we did this year. Uh, but again, with the prices as it is, we're renting, you know, right now because you can't buy anything, at least out here under 10, 15,000 an acre. It's ridiculous. Yeah. 
Um, so if you are like, I'm not, I'm not into farming, so I'm not really sure. Have you ever thought about like, if they're trying to push like second homes up next to your property, have you ever decided like, Hey, let's build these right over here and control them ourselves. So that way we at least control that income rather than having to, uh, to sell. I mean, again, it takes, takes a lot of money to do that. I mean, yeah, the community yeah. that I live in isn't the richest community. Um, it's a lot of family farmers and ranchers, a lot of beef farmers that are struggling just as much as we are. So when it comes to that, nobody really has the income to do that. There's a lot of developers coming out of state from California, New York, Chicago. They have a lot more money than us, so they can bid a lot higher than us. So Makes sense. when it comes to that, there's really no market for it for us because we don't have enough money to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, has building your uh, musical, because I know you're in uh, country music, you have a bunch of songs. Uh, has that kind of helped, uh, you, I guess, your, your platform or anything like that? Or is that kind of what really got you into music? Yeah, I mean, music has always been a big part of me. I never thought I would, I would get into it because the farm was always the priority and has been. So when I got into music, I started building momentum and then COVID happened. And then now when I came back from COVID, I just didn't feel the same as I did before because there's a lot of deals being made in Nashville. They want a certain image and I do not fit that image. I'll tell you that right now. If I'm going to do music, I'm probably going to be alone or with an artist that sees my potential and doesn't care about my political views. I've kind of made yeah. it to where people know who I am now. And so some, some publishers might not want to deal with that. I mean, my advocacy more is for, you know, you know, my crowd, fairs and festivals, people that believe in the economy and the American dream and want to keep their pockets full and not give it all the, the all to the government, right? So yeah. when I make when I make music, it's more for my agriculture communities and middle class families that understand my advocacy. It's not for people in Los Angeles or San Francisco and stuff like that. So Music has been great, but I have pushed a little away a little bit because of opportunities with national news and other opportunities to speak for agriculture. So hopefully we'll be uh, releasing music soon. But for now, I'm, I'm just taking time to advocate for my people and family farmers and ranchers. One of, one of my uh, best friends is uh, um, in music and what he loves about music. It's like a way to like tell your story. Is that what really kind of draws to you? It's like, hey, I got my all my passions and what I'm passionate about. But let's throw my passions in with music to really tell my story. Yeah, I think that's why I started was, you know, I was writing music with an amazing artist in town. And um, I just I felt like Nashville changed after COVID. It was very like how many views you got or how many followers you had. And it it was less about the actual song than it was about just like the following and how much money the label could make. So um, I, I get it when he says, you know, it's about telling your story, but unfortunately there's a lot of great artists and songwriters out there that don't get recognition for an amazing song unless they have 50 or 80,000 followers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's all about attention and mm -hmm. I guess attention and money, but um, yeah. so if people wanted to get more educated on ag agriculture or really to, I guess, dive in and learn more about what everything that's going on, where would you suggest, uh, that them their process for them to go look look for that yeah i mean if you want to get educated on you know bills or where to buy or anything like that i would definitely follow farm bureau is a great one um fence post always has great stuff ag daily um the farm journal is always great follow resources that already have the farmers and ranchers back instead of going to like new york times or, uh, you know, just random websites that pop up. Um, but yeah, I mean, even just following your local farmers and ranchers on, on social media too, that's a great way to get involved. Is there any like, uh, I guess, last minute, um, something you want to say to our listeners or last piece of, I guess, advice or even just information you want to leave them with to, to really think about? Yeah, I mean, just look at the future of your food supply. I get messages every day about empty shelves and people scared because they can't get the resources that they need. It's something that's going on. It's something we don't take seriously enough. I think the only reason why agriculture has been put on a pedestal this year is because of, you know, people starting to realize that there might be a problem in the future and people starting to go outside the cities and actually understand the rural communities. So the yeah. best advice I can give you is joining emails that are going to 
let you know what is going on, like protect the harvest. Um, they fight for farmers and ranchers around the country. And also don't forget that rural communities were there first. If you're moving out to the countryside, it's not all about you. It's about your farming communities, the tractors on the side of the road, the kids playing out in the yard, because they weren't used to having neighbors five years ago. And, and now they're starting to build a little bit more. So just support when you can spend that extra dollar. If it costs more, that's okay, because at least you're giving it back to family farmers and ranchers and you know exactly where your food is coming from. So um, where can people find uh, find more about you? Um, so I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm starting to get back on Twitter. I was not a Twitter fan because <laughs> they put, I mean, for me, they took all of my stuff down. So I was like, okay, screw Twitter. I'm not going to go on there anymore. But um, I'm back on Twitter uh, because people have been sharing my stuff. So, uh, but LinkedIn is, is big. I just, people are loving it. I love LinkedIn. You know, we just got over 660,000 impressions and Oh, wow. three or 400 follow reshares. It was crazy the other day. So LinkedIn has been great, but TikTok's my big one. You want to find me on Tucker Carlson, Fox News. I'm probably going to be on there quite a bit. Um, and of course, I'll be at the TPUSA America Fest in Phoenix in December, supporting America, being a patriot, uh, you know, just being strong for agriculture. So 